one thing that I'm I really wanted to ask you just because you, you have you know six years in, especially for the successful agents that you've seen, the successful agents that you've helped grow. What is that cycle of a real estate agent? So for the agents that are on the phone and they feel like you know I'm not really getting any results right this year, what's what's your message and what's the cycle that you see? Year over year, your business will compound, right? And it's like again, you have a business now. You're not just a salesperson. Right. You have a business. And like any business that you would ever start, like even Amazon, year one wasn't the greatest, but didn't start out being what you know today. They, everyone comes from humble beginnings. So just understand that year after year after year, you're building a book, mm -hmm. right? And you're, level, you're building that database. So every year, if you're feeding it, it will pay you, right? It will feed you back. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel, man. I just wanted to uh, take some time and really bring you some more value as far as what I thought. I have a guy on right now who I believe is really bringing a lot of value to the YouTube space, especially for new agents. Um, his name is Henry, and he's an agent out of, are you stationed Jersey. in New Jersey? Right, yeah, out of New Jersey. Uh, ran across his channel and was really, really impressed with what he's doing and the, the way he's breaking down you know, kind of what you should be doing as an agent to become successful, like the real nitty gritty. I think a lot of times on YouTube, you see people who are giving advice who don't necessarily have the deals to back it up. But this guy right here is a rock star. He's actually getting the, getting the work done and you'll know it by, you know, just watching the channel. So I'd love to introduce you guys. Henry is it Einstein. Eisenstein. Eisenstein. Okay. I'll take Henry. Einstein any day of the week. I mean, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely, man. Tell them a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, so I uh, just turned 27 actually yesterday and uh, been in the business for about six years. And uh, over the last uh, three years, uh, I went from about zero to 100,000 a month in, in sales and commissions mm -hmm. and uh, built up a small team that's really been life changing. You know, this industry, you know, look, I'm a two time college dropout. And if, uh, you know, if I can make it in this business, anybody can. Wow, 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 wow. Tell us about that, man. What was what, what this college wasn't thing for you? You know what I mean? Because we, we can all tell you're a very bright guy. So. I appreciate it. Well, look, I, um, I didn't have a really good uh, uh, time in school. I was bullied a lot. Mm. So uh, I knew from like eighth grade, I didn't want to go to college. I was like, why would I want to pay <laughs> to be, <laughs> to, to go through this experience? And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't know I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I just knew school wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was one of those kids who dropped out, went back and then dropped out again. Gotcha, gotcha. So you kind of got some, so you probably had some people in your ear like, no, you should probably go finish. You need to do this. You need to do this. 100%. Yeah, I got into real estate and my first year was terrible. Uh, I lost everything I had saved up. And uh -huh. uh, I was like, maybe I should go to school or something because clearly yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. But it, you know, I, I decided to jump back into it. But again, that's going to be so valuable for the newer, newer agents and even for myself because that's really what I wanted to dive in. That was probably going to be the first question. What was sure. your first year like as far as you know the first year and then going on to your early years kind of tell us how it is because as a new agent we all go through that up and down and the, the emotions like you know okay is this gonna really for me is this gonna work out type of thing kind of tell sure. us your experience yes yeah, so um I uh came from a background of management you know I was uh, at 20 years old I was making almost 70 grand a year running two franchises 80 employees you know like I, I got I got really fortunate with the people I was working with before so I wasn't afraid of the work I was ready to work seven days a week, every second hour, you know, every single hour of the, uh, of the work day. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew I needed a mentor. The problem was I chose the wrong one. The only person I knew who was an agent who was doing 20, 30 million a year in sales, um, but she focused on foreclosures. And I didn't, had no idea the difference. Okay. You know, and, um, you know, she was just a family friend who, you know, appeared to do well. And, you know, when she, she got 100% of her business from the bank. She got a, you know, all the, all the business was just, it was a, such a different world mm -hmm. than what we're, you know, now we're so used to. Right, right. And, um, I got into it and I was basically an employee, you okay. know, and 
you know, I, I was, uh, you know, I was watching Million Dollar Listing New York and, you know, I go from, you know, looking at multi-million dollar penthouses to taking mm. pictures of t- houses that should be yeah, torn down. Yeah, I heard, <laughs> I heard the foreclosure side is a beast when it comes to especially working with the bank, what they're, what they're wanting from you, the way you're going out, taking the photos of all the, you know. 100%, and I did right. all that. So I basically just turned into an employee and it was nothing like I, uh, that I had imagined. And don't get me wrong years later now, you know, as an investor, like you and I were chatting about before, like it taught me a lot, but I didn't realize how much it would pay off in the future. I don't recommend anybody goes to do that at the beginning of their career because it definitely gave me a sour taste in my mouth for real estate. But, uh, yeah, it just first year killed me. Really? Okay. Okay. And then, so after that first year, you kind of figured out Hey, I don't really want to go this foreclosure route. And then you start, you basically had to, rebuild your whole business model of how you were going to push forward right exactly tell us a little bit about like kind of what was your mindset and what were you thinking there so my first commission check didn't even happen until like my 11th month in the business and um thankfully like the woman i had worked for there was a couple that came in and they didn't really like her at all because she didn't really know the you know that side of the business so i ended up working with them i did a sale and a buy and i made almost 30 grand um in two transactions i was like okay whatever i just did i gotta learn how to do that again yeah yeah, uh, yeah. you know that was more money than i've ever seen in the check before so i um i took all my money and i dumped it into self-development i dumped it into coaching i dumped it into all the right things thank god mm-hmm. and um I went to a Tom Ferry event was one of the first things my coach ever told me to do. Okay. I met some really powerful people with successful agents in Jersey. And I ended up working for them for uh, the next year, which was really where we could talk about cold calling. Cause that's where I learned basically okay. everything about Mojo dialer Absolutely. and uh, you know, making cold calls. Okay. Okay. And so at that point in time, you're, pre- you're fresh on the phone. Kind of tell us like, cause everybody you deal with this, right? When you first start cold calling, you have that feeling like, I don't know what to say. Uh, I don't know how they're going to react. You kind of, and on the day to day, I think a lot of people get defeated because they have that fear of cold calling. Kind of, kind of walk us through how you overcome that, overcome that, and how are you able to also improve your skills? Because that's what you really have that I saw through the channel is you have the skill set of being able to communicate to people and then be able to build that relationship. Because we all know that the deal isn't happening the first time you talk to somebody. It's Absolutely. That long term, right? Absolutely, and it's funny. So, like I um. Like I told you, I had a, I had a good background of sales, uh, of call it just phone call training. Like with, I would train my staff on what to say to clients. Right. Okay. And then the woman who I worked for originally starts saying to me towards the end of the time I was with her, she was like, Hey, why don't you start prospecting? I was like, mm-hmm. okay, like what, what does that entail? And she's like, well, you're going to pick up the phone and you're going to call expired. I was like, okay. I mean, that sounds interesting. I was like, tell me more about this. She's like, you're literally just going to cold call people and pitch them on possibly selling their house with you. And I was terrified. I was like, I would rather go to the mall. I literally said this to her. I would rather go to the mall and start conversations with people walking Mm -hmm. around than make a cold call. That was exact words I had said. I mean, now I've made over a million sales calls in my career, you know, so like, but like at the very beginning, I was petrified. I didn't know what to say. She didn't give me good scripts. She just set me up on a dialing service and said, call them. I had no idea what to say, you know, or who I was even speaking to. I didn't know much about the real estate business, right? Sure. So uh, anyways, my first couple, uh, when I um, was starting, it was really just about getting to uh, 10 no's. How fast can I get to 10 people who told me no, 20 people told me no, then 30 or 40 or 50 people a day who told me no, because mm-hmm. I knew that if just enough people told me no, somebody would probably right. say yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So that's really how it started. And then I started understanding when I went to Tom Ferry, which I think is a great, a great resource for newer agents. He's got a lot of free downloadable stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and um I went to a sales uh, sales conference or training that he had, and mm-hmm. we uh, I got a script book, and that script book changed my life because I yeah. literally just read the script. I mean, the scripts work; just use the scripts, you know. And uh, I just I wasn't great, but what I did more than anybody else is that I made more calls than anybody. I would I make I make five hundred to a thousand calls a day, and I just didn't care, yeah. you know. Look, I was 22. You know, I was 22. I was in the yeah. office at seven o'clock in the morning and I would just dial all day. I just, dial I had nothing to do. Exactly. Right. So that uh, that's something that I really start to see with the same model with the successful agents, right? They're willing to do a lot of the prospecting. And I think that most people don't understand the amount of failures you have to have to be successful, right? I don't think they really get that point. Like for me, I've been, I've been you know, cold calling now a little bit over a year. I've made like 60,000 calls this year. You know what I mean? And I think now I'm able, I don't make nearly as many calls because I'm able to, to, you know, my thing is, is building relationships. 
yeah, I do a lot of circle prospecting, right? So I'm I'm building relationships over the long term. Um, I haven't really delved into the, the expires of Fizzbo's, really not in this market for sure, because it's kind of crazy. They're selling like hotcakes. So yeah, there's not a lot of expires. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, uh, I'm going to really focus in and I'm my focus is for 2023, right? What is that yeah. year going to look like whenever the market kind of shifts and we get back to more of a normalized market and then my sellers can then sell and buy what they want? What sure. is that my business going to look like? And I'm touching circle prospecting, which a lot of people aren't doing at all. So yeah. I'm trying to get to people first, right? That's kind of my And I do the same. And it's funny because like now that my business has evolved so much that now my circle prospecting is turned into like, uh, because I'm on the investment side as well. Right. And I've learned that if I want to get the most out of it, why don't I just call the areas that I'm looking to invest in? Correct. Right. And now I do that. So what I do is I call for multifamilies, larger multifamily properties. Okay. Right. So I build up a list of larger multifamily because I also do commercial real estate. Okay. So I circle prospect large multifamilies that my, my partners and I want to buy. Mm -hmm. And also if they don't want the price that I could pay, I could just list it for sale. Right. So like, I've just learned that no matter what, I'm going to make money on that deal. Absolutely. Right. Or I can wholesale it. Right. And it, you can make money. I mean, listen, it's all in the deal. If you get somebody who's looking to sell, there's any way that you shape and form, you can make money on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Man. Okay. And then I wanted to ask in your, in your opinion, man, what are some of the most productive activities, say new agents coming into the business? Because what I did was I narrowed down, you know, three things that I wanted to do and I'm just going to be consistent rather yep. than trying to do all of these things and really not mastering anything. So in your opinion, what are the most productive, you know, activities that new agents should be doing in their business when they first get started? Number one, be on the phone. Like, like we've been talking about, like, I, I find it laughable when anybody tries to question that right. because it's like nothing else will pay you a thousand dollars an hour, like making sales calls will. And like, I feel like everyone in the beginning of their career tries to do everything else except for making sales calls. Yep. And even successful agents, the first thing that they drop when they become busy is sales calls. Right. Right. And it's the lifeblood of our business. So if yes. I, I believe at the very beginning of your career, you have no excuse because you have all the time in the freaking world. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, you should just be on the phones. That's number one. Number two uh, is being face to face with more people. Your network is your net worth. And I'm sure everyone's heard that a thousand times, but right. I have not realized until within the last two years, how valuable relationships are mm -hmm. in, in every way, shape and form. Right. Like I would not be one one hundredth of who I am today without the people in my life. And a lot of them I met through networking events or even cold calling. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, right. Sure. And uh, the last thing is really um, self-development, you know, spend a lot of time on self-development, spend a lot of time learning to be a better version of you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a forever student, my man. I mean, like, again, like I'm a, I'm a two-time college dropout, but I'm obsessed with educating myself, you know, just through self-education and YouTube sure. videos and conferences and everything like that. You, you will, your business will only grow as much as your mindset. Right. Right. hundred percent. Okay. Okay. And then if you can, I'd love to, you know, kind of hear if you have like a morning routine type of thing, me, myself, I'm up 4am and get a workout in meditation, read a little bit, you know, Boy, shower, yeah. get ready for the, get ready for the day. Yeah, man. I'm up. I'm already I, Dude, I used to do that, man. There was a period of time in my life where I was like 3.30, yeah. 3.45, I'd wake up, gym in the, I, I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. Um, I, um, I look at it like this. My, the biggest things are, cause I used to do that. I, I was super consistent for a long time. I kind of fell off recently uh, over the last few years. Mm -hmm. especially through COVID, yeah, um, sure, right? Sure. But uh, I just haven't gotten back on it. But my biggest thing is just get to the, like dress for success first thing. I always like dressing up in a suit, but I'm in mm -hmm. California with my girlfriends. So that's why I've dressed down a little bit, but yeah. um, <laughs> I dress for success. I get to the office first thing. I do my team meeting at 9 a.m. sharp every single day. Mm -hmm. And then right as soon as my team meeting ends, I hit the phones, right? It's like, the, it's like my routine is really just get dressed for success, get mm -hmm. to the office as fast as freaking possible, get my team meeting done and get on the phones. Get like that's the that is, that is my routine Monday through Friday every week, no matter what is going on. And even when I'm in California, it's still get up, dress for success. I'm wearing a suit underneath this. It's just a little chilly, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, dress for success and just get on the phones, right? And that's the that's the beauty of, you know, especially the new age as far as how, because when you, you, how long into your career did you start with a dialer? How many years were you? Um, uh, a little bit after my first year. I My yeah, first year, I didn't even touch it, yeah. Probably. It's such a blessing that I think, you know, some of our new agents can take for granted. I, I feel like I've taken it for granted myself, but I've always made my calls, right? But when I stop and think about it, how, you know, some of the people who came before us have become successful, they didn't even have a dialer. It's Dude, like, this device has made me a millionaire. 
Right. Like who this device was, it's crazy. Cause it's like, do you understand like the power of this is insane. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. People forget about that. It's like, I, I don't even know how. I really couldn't think about it. Listen, like the MLS now is an app. Like, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine like going to a book. They had books. Books back in the day. Yeah. Book. Like, I couldn't fathom yeah. how I would have built it the way I built it. I mean, I give them a lot of credit. Imagine selling 100 homes a year 30 years ago. I don't know mm -hmm. how I would have done that. Right. Yeah. I'm Without in California all the making sales systems, homes, part of my whole actually, company. From actually going out and showing homes yourself. And now you just have a, you know, they can just go up and you have the buyer's agent show your listings, right? Yeah. And we have a Bluetooth block box. Yeah, like, exactly. the <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's feedback to your phone in two seconds. I mean, it's just insane. <laughs> right. right. So for sure. Okay. Failure. But if you look over a long enough period of time, it's amazing what somebody can accomplish. Pretty much like how the stock market works, right? It's in certain years, the stock market dips and all that. But over the long term, what does that look like? You're right? just not going to invest in stocks. You're just not going to invest in real yeah. estate because in one period of time, in 2008, 2009, the whole right. thing went to nothing. You're like, mm -hmm. you're just going to say real estate sucks? No, it's like you need to, it's a long game. Yeah. Think in five or 10 year windows of time, not a month, not a year. It's just right. not enough period. It's just not long enough to, to, Build a successful career. How many people do you know who are millionaires today? Mm -hmm. in, in like that, nothing it doesn't happen. You know, for sure, it's a, for sure. it's a ten or twenty year game. Yep, for sure. And I think that's that's something that I guess just even with myself, I really had to discipline my mind at the beginning because I'm a you know pretty ambitious guy. Whenever I do something, I you know fairly fairly good at it, right? And then being an investor, you know, seeing the returns on investments, that sort of thing. But then hopping into real estate, there was still that period. Like my first six months, I sold one deal, right? And then my- my Better than me. <laughs> my, last, my last six months, I did 15, right? That's awesome. So it just kind of just started coming. And then once the momentum came, then I just started knowing, I started, I double-ended this deal, I had listings, because that's really what I go after. I'm speaking with property owners because I know at some point in time, when they sell, they're going to want to buy. So I'm looking at that standpoint, okay, this is a potential two deal uh, situation. And then if I'm able to really give them the right type of service and that sort of thing, build that relationship, they're going to start referring people and it's just going to compound and compound. Listen, at the very beginning of your career, you're pushing a rock uphill and eventually right. between your two and five year mark, all of a mm -hmm. sudden it starts draw, it goes down the other way really? and it just builds and builds and builds. Yeah, then that's that's what I think a lot of a lot of agents just need to hear, and I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you coming on and talking about that. Sure. So, um, in your opinion, what are some good books that you would recommend that you read? Because you seem like the type of guy that does a lot of reading. Um, what would you, you know, kind of recommend? So I listen to a lot of books. I, I haven't I haven't picked audible. up. A, yeah, yeah, I'm a huge audible listener. Uh, so let's see. Um, a couple books that I can recommend is my um. Beginner ones, I'd say, is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you haven't read that book, it's definitely a classic and everyone should read it. Another classic is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Like those are like, those are two books that if you haven't read yet, those should, those are foundational forever reads that you could read year after year. And it never, it's, it's, it'll hit you differently every year. Um, and then uh, I'm more of um, a big, big picture guy. Like I'm, a, I, I think visionary wise. So like reading the book, like Principles, by Ray Dalio was a really insightful book. Okay. Um, you know, I, I really like huge big picture books like that. Mm -hmm. um, I was also a big Grant Cardone fan or still am. So like okay. any book by Grant Cardone, I, you know, I, I, you know, those, those were important to me in my life, you know? Okay. For sure. Sure. Okay. And then um, as far as your investing, I know you said you, you do looking into multifamilies, that sort of thing. Have you ever delved into the Airbnb space? Have you doing? Have you done any thought about that that investment? So I was reading ahead of your questions, man, and I was going through them, and I saw that, and I was I was on the plane last night flying from Jersey to Cali, mm -hmm. and I was oh, the whole entire time I was listening to content about Airbnb, yeah, uh, Airbnbs and where to focus on. Um, listen, I, I have not done it. Mm -hmm. I, I have friends who are very very successful in it, and I have friends who have tried it and didn't like it. You didn't know, like it. yeah. Listen, I, I, the biggest thing I took away from, from all the studying I've done uh, over the last couple of months is that it's the, it's you, you are building a, it's a separate entity. It's a separate business. You are in the hospitality business now. It's not a, you're not an investor, you're not a real estate investor. No, no. Correct. So I, I, it's like, you just have to ask yourself, it's like, do I really want to start another business? Which mm -hmm. look great. Some people are doing fantastic and you could do really well with it. Or do I want a passive income stream where I really don't, you know, like, what do you want? What's more important? Yeah. And to me, I just need, I don't need an extra few hundred dollars a unit. 
Yeah, for sure. You know, like they, this is such a long-term play for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, unless I have somebody who comes to me and, you know, maybe they just want to run that division themselves and whatever, I, I have no interest in personally running another company, you know? Sure. Yeah, I have a, I have six myself, man. Um, I run them all. Basically, I don't really have a, a management team. I just have- really Airbnbs? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, I've, I just found processes, right? You know what I mean? So there's different apps right. and whatnot to send all your messages out. They're all connected to my- You can, I was going to say, I, I know people like yourself, super successful. So, yeah, there's so many avenues that you can still run it. And yeah, it's not, like I said, it's definitely not passive as far as like a traditional rental. I have that in my portfolio as well. That's just, hey- Where, where do you, where do you have your Airbnbs? So I have three here in Dallas and I have another three in Mississippi where I'm from. Got it. Got it. So, college town type of situation a lot of people coming in games weddings graduations that sort of thing so i I love to pick your brain on that i love to pick your brain on that because i think it's definitely um i just think like stick to what you know i don't know airbnb i definitely got to try it yeah but it's like i I think that like um everything i've done so far has been like the normal passive investment strategies for sure i think the reason i like this so much is just the return on investment oh it's the same it 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 just changes the numbers when you're running, you know, your, your numbers on the property, right? Uh, sure. the, the, the cash, the cash return is just kind of is ridiculous. Sometimes I'm like, wow. So just on this small investment that I made, especially because I bought a few of them back in like 2017. So single families or do you focus on? Or? I, I do single. Yeah. Mostly single families. I have, I've had a condo before, but then a dealing with HOAs is just a, it's a headache. Okay. Right. So if I, I am going to deal with condos again, but I'll buy like fourplex or a duplex yeah, type so, of thing. Yeah, so two to four units are like my specialty. I can, mm-hmm. I'm getting them at rock bottom prices still in this market. And like, wow. I just restructure them. And I mean, again, like when I refi, I'm, I'm at like 40 to 100 or infinite returns, 40% plus yeah. infinite returns. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it just Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's ridiculous for sure. Okay, <laughs> perfect, man, perfect. And then, oh yeah, we're the one to ask this question. So as far as going, just jumping back into the kind of mindset, right? What do you do to overcome or what did you do to overcome, you know, any s- negative self-talk? Like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is happening. Kind of, I know maybe you don't probably might not have as much now as far as with your real estate business, but back when, like that first year when you were in that space, what was, you know, kind of the things that help you get over that hump to be able to get to that next, you know, that next year when things really started going for you? Uh, I'm a huge fan of conferences. I would just, I would level up my network. I mean, like, again, like, you know, your five people you spend the most time with is the, you know, is who you become. Right. And I, uh, when I was young, I was surrounded with terrible, you know, like just kids who didn't get it and I don't blame them, but you know, like I just, I learned very early, thankfully, like I got turned on to the self-development life of, of uh, around 17, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, very grateful for that. But I, I just forever and always, I'm very cognizant of where my energy is and like who I'm surrounded by. And if I'm not surrounded by, you know, people who are leveling me up, they're pulling me back. So just be, con- I, I just tell people to be conscious of your, your environment. And second is like, listen, every single day, you, you, like you would lift weights, your mindset, you gotta, you gotta lift weights with your mind, you know? And it's like, if you're not reading or listening to content daily, like, again, it's very easy to succumb to life's challenges. Right. Like, listen, dude, like my parents are separating my, um, I just had to put a pet down. I'm, I'm got, you know, renovating an apartment and it's been like crazy, you know, hectic and stressful of, uh, you know, kind of being without a place to be. And you know what I mean? Like, so like life's going to continue to do that, but my staff doesn't care. You know, right. my clients don't care, mm-hmm. you know, like none of them care that about my personal issues. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure they'd be empathetic, but like they have their own things going on. Right. And they, my staff still wants their paycheck. So no matter what's going on in my world, I, you know, I still have to make sure that I'm there and present and training and doing all these things. So, you know, it's just, I, I try to stay in a life of, in a mindset of gratitude. For sure. You know, Tony Robbins talks about gratitude a lot, oh, you know, yeah. the secret to living and is giving. And, and it's like just staying in a, in a, in a mindset, in a focus of gratitude. It's hard to be upset. For sure. For sure. Okay, man. Okay. Well, honestly, man, I think that's pretty much all I had for you, man. I really appreciate you coming on. If you can go ahead and plug your channel, plug your, your social medias and everything. So people know where to find you. Cool. Uh, yeah. Or you can literally just Google me anywhere. Or just my full name, Henry Eisenstein. Uh, that's not Einstein, Eisenstein. So <laughs> H-E-N-R-Y-E-I-S-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. Look, Google me anywhere. Okay. Okay, man. 
Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. I think we brought a lot of value to a lot of people just now and uh, looking forward to all the things that you're doing in the future. I'm definitely plugged into your YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm watching the content and really enjoying it, man. And I appreciate you coming on to the show.